أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسم صدق الله العظيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد ناو ويكم تو سوره التحريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها النبي لما تحرم ما احل الله لك تبتغي مرضات ازواجك والله غفور رحيم قد فرض الله لكم تحله ايمانكم والله مولاكم وهو العليم الحكيم صدق الله العظيم you see this last pair of surahs both us starting with the same words يا ايها النبي سورة الطلاق started يا أيها النبي إذا تلقتم النساء فتلقوهن لعدتهن this surah again starting with يا أيها النبي O Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم why do you ban for yourself what Allah سبحانه وتعالى has made lawful to you you want to seek the pleasure of your wives and Allah is forgive forgiver merciful There's a incident in the background that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to visit every wife, a very short visit, five minutes, ten minutes, between Asr and Maghrib. But it so happened once that to Hazrat Zainab bint Jahsh, one of the wives of the Prophet, رضي الله عنها, some honey. came from somewhere so she used to present that honey to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he visited her and so more time was passing over there than the routine so this was hard on hazrat aisha and hazrat hafsa radhiyallahu ta'ala anhuma so they decided that when the prophet comes to us we shall say that from your mouth the smell of maghafir is coming maghafir was some you know plant which had some disagreeable smell but the bee honey bee if it had sucked the flowers of maghafir then the in the honey also the smell comes so they did this to prophet you know he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam i will never take it again so on this allah subhanahu wa taala say it's not correct you have have committed a mistake lema tuhrimu ma ahalla allah lak that was permissible for you halal for you so why do you ban on yourself the use of something which is permissible which is halal only to please your wives the prophet was very lenient very lenient very lenient to the wives no doubt he says khairukum khairukum li ahlikum wa ana khairu khairukum li ahli best among you are those who are good to their families and i am best of you for my families قد فرض الله لكم تحلة أعمالكم. الله has indeed ordained for you the dissolution of your oaths. If you take an oath, but you want now to dissolve it, there is a way, and we have read it. There is the kafara mentioned in Surah Al-Maidah. والله مولاكم وهو العليم الحكيم. And Allah is your protector, and He is the knower, the wise. It means you should you finish your oath, and you. Give the kafara. And another incident. Why is Asma Nabiyyu ila baad ya zawajhi hadisa? And recall when the Prophet confided to one of his wives a certain matter as a secret. Falamma nabbat bhi. When she disclosed it to the to another wife, it was probably Hazrat Aisha who disclosed the disclosed that secret to Hazrat Hafsa. Nabiyyu Allah Taala Adhuma. 
فلما نبات به واضر الله سو وین سی ڈسکلوز اٹ اینڈ اللہ سبحان و تعالی انفارم دی میسنجر آف اللہ اباؤٹ دس عرف بازہ و عرض البازن سو ہی ڈسکلوز دیٹ ٹو ہم ہی میڈ نون ٹو ہر اے پارٹ آف اٹ اینڈ پاس ٹوور دی ادر پارٹ فلما نباہا بھی سو وین ہی انفارم ہر آف اٹ سی سیڈ من امبا کا حاضا ہو انفارم یو آف اٹ قال نبانی العلیم الخبیر He said, the knower, the awareer, informed me. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a tone of displeasure and anger in it. Now here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing those two wives of the Prophet. That is the Aisha and the Hafsa radhi Allah ta'ala anhumah. In tatuba ila Allahi faqad sagat kulubokuma. If you two turn towards Allah repentant, your hearts are indeed so inclined. But if you support one another against him, against the Prophet ﷺ, so listen, verily Allah is his protector, Jibreelo, and all after him Jibreel, Vasalihul Mu'mineen, and you know all the righteous believers, Well, Malaika to Mada Zalika Zaheer, and after that, all the angels are also helpers of our Prophet ﷺ. Asar Abbuhu, another threat. It may be that in Talakakunna, if our Prophet divorces you all, and Yubdilahu as wide and khairam min kunna, the Lord will give him in exchange wives better than you. Muslimatin, submissive. Mominatin, believing. Kanetatin, obedient. Taibatin, penitent. Abidatin, devout. Abidatin, saihatin, given to fasting. Sayyibatin wa abkara, previously married or virgins. These five ayats, you know, they have a background of the family life of the Prophet ﷺ. And the lesson is that although one should be lenient to the family, but the boundaries of the Sharia, they have to kept intact. Now it was not possible. For us, you know, it's possible that we make something which is haram, haral for us, for the sake of our wives or our children. But it was not possible for the Prophet that he can take something which is haram. But he did the other way. That thing that was halal, he put a ban on himself that he will not use it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it and gave this guidance for all the ummah. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارَا O you who believe, try to save yourselves and your families from the fire. Now this is the positive role that a moment believer has to play in his family. The negative was, guard yourself, lest their love takes you in the wrong direction. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ وَأَوْلَادِكُمْ عَدُوًا لَكُمْ فَحَزَرُوهُ Guard yourself. Be on the alert. But the positive role is that you have to try to save them from the fire of hell. Try to bring them to the way of Allah. Try to bring them up in the best Islamic way so that they are saved from the day of judgment from the fire of hell. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِكُمْ نَارَا وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةَ The fuel of that fire is to be mankind and stones. Stones, they are idols. When they used to do worship, they will also be thrown with them into the fire of the hell. عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكَةٌ غِلَاظٌ شِدَادٌ Over that are appointed angels who are very stern and very strong. لا يأسون الله ما أمرهم. They never disobey Allah. Whatever Allah commands them, they follow no ma you maroon. They do whatever they are commanded to do. What does it mean? You love your children, but due to excessive love, these children are going on wrong ways. If they are going on wrong ways, what does it mean? They are going to the fire of hell. Now, when these beloved ones of you They will be thrown in the fire of hell. And you know the angels will be there. They will never, their hearts will never melt 
on their weeping and crying and mourning and groaning. They are very stern. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they have to be chastised, they will chastise. Ya ayyuhu ladhina kafaru la qatadurul yawm. And it will be said to the disbelievers, O you who disbelieved, la qatadurul yawm. Do not excuse yourself this day. Inna ma tijawna ma kuntum ta'amaloon. You are only being recompensed for what you used to do. Now comes a very beautiful ayah of the Qur'an addressing the Muslims. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu tubu ila allahi tawbatan nasuha. O you who believe or profess to believe, repent to Allah, turn to Allah in sincere repentance, tawbatan nasuha, pure and sincere repentance. Asara bukum ayyuhu kafiran kum sayyatikum. Maybe that your Lord will acquit you and expense from your record your evil deeds. وَيُدْخِلَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَرِبِي مِنْ تَعْتِ الْأَنْحَارِ And make you enter the gardens underneath which rivers will be flowing. يَوْمَ لَا يُخْزِ اللَّهُ النَّبِيَّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَاهُ The day when Allah will not humiliate the Prophet and those who believed with him. نُورُهُمْ يَسْعَى بَيْنَا اَدِيهِمْ Now the same picture which we found in Surah Al-Hadid. يَوْمَ تَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يُؤْرُهُمْ يَسْعَى بَيْنَ عَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِيَمَانِهِمْ مُشْرَاكُمُ الْيَوْمَ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَعْتِ الْأَنْحَارِ The same picture here. نُورُهُمْ يَسْعَى بَيْنَ عَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِيَمَانِهِمْ Their light will be running in front of them and on their right hand side. يَقُولُونَ And they will be saying, رَبَّنَا أَتْمِمْ لَنَا نُورَنَا Inna ka ala kulli shayin qadeer. Verily, you are powerful over everything. Now what does this mean? Actually, the noor of iman will be according to the intensity of iman. Somebody had very intense iman, so light will be very strong. Others had iman in their heart, but not so intense. So the light will be low. In this way, Varying degrees of lights. The Prophet had said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on that day, some people will be given a light which will enlighten from Medina to Sana'a. Up to Sana'a, Yemen, this light will go. And there will be others whose light will only uh, lighten the place before their feet, just like the light of a torch. It has a very small area, but you see the way. You can, you say, you are safe. So this is the variation. So those who light will be not very strong. They will then pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Oh Allah, our light is not so strong. Why? We had not so intense iman. We didn't have many, uh, so many good deeds. So this thing you can, uh, you can perfect our life by your own authority. So Rabbana atmim lana nurana. O oh Allah, make our life, light perfect, waqfir lana. And because it is not perfect due to our sins, so forgive us our sins. Inna ka'ala kulli shayin qadeer. Verily, you have power over everything. Ya ayyuhan nabiyo jahid al-kuffara wal munafiqina waghluz alayhim. O Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, struggle hard against the disbelievers and the hypocrites. And be you harsh with them. Your leniency, you know, shouldn't be for the hypocrites. Leniency for the believers. But for the hypocrites and the kuffar, you have to be harsh. Ma wahum jahannam wa besal masweed. Their abode is hell and it is an evil destination. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving here four examples of women. Generally, the idea among women folk is that actually the religion addresses only men. We are under men, so as if we are attached to our men. If they are going, do, doing good deeds, it's okay. We shall also benefit from their good deeds. Quran says, no, each, every soul, male or female, has to work for himself or herself. And there can be that the husband might be a very good person, but the wife might be going to Jahannam. Or the husband might be a very big enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the wife might be 
a very righteous, you know, servant of Allah. This is just possible. So every human soul, male or female, is independent of others regarding his own virtues, his own iman, his or her iman, his or her deeds. Now, as for the kafir women, ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَسَلَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُ اُمْرَاتَ نُوْهِمْ وَمْرَاتَ نُوْتُ Allah has struck a similitude for those who disbelieve the wife of Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam and the wife of Lut alayhi salatu wa salam. كَانَتَا تَحْتَ عَبْدَيْنِ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا صَالِحَيْنِ Both of them were under our two very righteous servants. Messengers of Allah, Nuh and Lut. And they were in their homes, wives. فَخَانَتَا هُمَا But they betrayed them. فَلَمْ يُغْنِيَا عَنْهُمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيَا So they and their husbands availed them nothing whatsoever against Allah. وَقِيلَ دْخَلَ النَّارَ بَعَدْ دَاخِلِينَ And it was said to them, enter the fire along with the antennas. Although they were wives of two messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ himself used to gather the women folk, close relatives. Then he should address each one by name. يَا فَاتِمَةُ بِنْتُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ سَلَّمْ أَنْ قَذِي نَفْسَكَ مِنَ النَّارِ فَإِنِّي لَا أَمْلِكُ لَكِ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيَا O Fatima, the dear daughter of the Messenger of Allah, you have to save yourself from the fire of hell. I will not have any authority about you on the Day of Judgment. يَا صَفِيَّةُ عَمَّةُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أَنْ قَذِي نَفْسَكِ مِنَ النَّارِ فَإِنِّي لَا أَمْلِكُ لَكِ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيَا O Safiya, the maternal aunt, the paternal aunt of the Messenger of Allah, you have to take out yourself from the fire, save yourself from the fire. I will not have any power, ever authority about you on the Day of Judgment. So every human soul is independent and responsible for his or her deeds. Conversely, there is the example of the wife of Firaun, Asiya. The name is not given in Quran, it is in Torah. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَسَلَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُمْ رَعَةَ فِرْعَونَ and Allah has struck a similitude for those who believe the wife of Fir'aun when she said this qalat, رَبِّ بْنِ لِي إِنْ دَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ O my Lord, build for me a house in the garden in thy presence near you. وَنَجَّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَونَ And deliver me from Fir'aun وَعَمَلَهِ and his doings. وَنَجَّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ And deliver me from the evil doing people. Now she was living in a palace, wife of the emperor Fir'aun. But she had a different way. As we know, she was an Israelite. And you know, she was taken to the palace. And the emperor took her as wife. And she reared Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam. She was so righteous and pious woman. But she was not happy with, with Firon and the attitude and what Firon was doing. So this is the example absolutely opposite. There the two messengers of Allah, Nuh and Lut, and wives, going to the hell. Here Fir'aun, who is going to the hell, but the wife Asiya was a very righteous woman. Now the fourth example. وَمَرْيَمْ أَبْنَةَ إِمْرَانَ الْنَتِي أَحْسَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا And the similitude of Maryam, daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity. So, فَنَفَغْنَا فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِنَا We breathed. Breathed into her, our spirit. وَصَدَّقَتْ بِكَلِ مَاتِ رَبِّهَا And she testified to the truth of the words of the Lord. وَكُتُبِهِ And his books. وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ And she was a very devout woman. Now this is the example where the woman or the girl herself was very pious. And she was in the custody of a very pious person, Zakriya alayhi salatu wa salam. So this is Nurul ala Nur. Now there is one corner is vacant here. Worst women in the homes of the best people, wife of Lut, wife of Nuh. Best woman in the house of worst man, Asiya. Best girl or woman and under the custody of a very pious and good man, that is the Kriya, she is Maryam. Now the worst woman in the home of the worst man, that fourth 
position is vacant. But that is filled in Quran in the last part in Surah Al-Tabbat Yada Abi Lahab. Abu Lahab, worst enemy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his wife Umm Jamil, also the worst enemy. We can't say which one of them was more, you know, bigger enemy to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam than the other. So that is, this is Nurul Ala Nur, Maryam, and that is Zulamatun, Baaduha Fawqabas, and that is Umm Jamil and her husband Abu Lahab. Now here we end with the group of ten Madani Surahs. This was the sixth Makki Madani group which ends here. Now the last and the seventh Madani Makki group starts with Surah Al-Mulk. And this is mostly Makki, two parts of the Quran. Most of it is Makki. A very few Surahs in the end you will find Madani. Just the converse of the first group. One Surah Surah Al-Fatiha, Makki, and six parts, Surah Al-Baqarah, al Imran, An-Nisa, Maida, Madaniyat. So it's the converse here. Now mostly this group is occupied by the Makki Surahs and very few, very little Madani Surahs. And here also, as it was in the third group of the Makki Surahs, there are subgroups of three Surahs. One solitary, two in a pair. Surah Al-Mulk is solitary. Then Surah Noon and Surah Haqqa will come as a pair. And so on. We shall see. Surah Al-Mulk, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Tabarak al-lazi biyadihi al-mulk wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Blessed is he whose hand is, in whose hand is the sovereignty. Mulk. Wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. And he has power over everything. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Who created the death and life to try you, which of you is best in conduct. وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْعَزِيدُ الْغَفُورُ And he is the mighty, the forgiving. Now you see here, creation of death is mentioned first and then of life. Normally if you think, life should be mentioned first and then death. Here, death first, and life later. Why? We have already passed that first death. When we were created in the form of the spirits, and then first death overtook us. And then we were revived when we came in this world, in the wombs of our mothers. Then our ruh was blown into us. So actually, death has preceded life. One death we have already gone through. The other death we are waiting for. That is coming to us. خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيَّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allama Iqbal has translated it, so to say, in a very beautiful couplet. قُلْ زُمِ حَسْتِي سَتُو اُبْرَاهِ مَانِنْدِ حَبَاب اِس زِيَانْ خَانِ مِنْ تَيْرَا اِمْتِحَانْ ہے زِنْدَگِ It's a period of testing. الَّذِي خَلَقَ سَمَا سَمَاوَاتٍ تِبَاقَ he who created the seven heavens, one above the other. مَا تَرَا فِي خَلْقِ الرَّحْمَانِ مِنْ تَفَاوُرِ You will not see in the creation of the compassionate any disparity or any flaws. فَرْجِعِ بَسَرَ هَلْ تَرَا مِنْ فُطُورِ So extend your gaze. Look. Do you find any flaw? سُمَّرْ جَيْلْ بَسَرَ كَرَّتَيْنِ Then return your gaze again and again. And yet... Your gaze will come back to you. Yan qalib ilayk al-basar wa khasim wa huwa hasir. It will be humiliated and tired. But it will not be able to point out any flaw in the creation of the heavens. It's so complete a phenomenon. So complete a creation. Summar jayi ba sara karra tayani yan qalib ilayk al-basar wa khasim wa huwa hasir. Wa laqa zayyanna samaa dunya bi masabiha. And we have adorned the lowest heaven with lamps. وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِشَيَاتِينَ And we have made it, we have made them as missiles, missiles for pelting satans. وَعَتَرْنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابَ السَّيْرِ And we have prepared for them the chastisement of the blazing fire. وَلِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمَ As for those who disbelieve in their Lord, for them is the chastisement of the hell. 
وبيس المصير and it's a very evil destination is a wal kufiha when they will be thrown into it sami'u laha shahiqan they will hear it roaring with a terrible terrible drawing in of the breath taking into the breath with the roar wa hiya tafur and it will be blazing forth takadu tamayyazu min al ghais it will be as if it will burst with rage kullama ulqiya fiha fawjun wanamar a group will be cast into it sa'alahum khazanatuha so the keepers of hell will ask them alam yatakum nazir did not a warner come to you qalu bala qad ja'ana nazirun they will say why not a warner did come to us faqazzabna we belied him wa qulna ma anzal allah min shay' and we said Allah has not sent down anything in antum illa fi dalal kabir you are surely in a great error you are gravely mistaken wa qalu law kunna nasma wa naqilu it said they said had we listened attentively aw naqil or we had tried to understand ma kunna fi ashab sa'id we would not have been the dwellers of this hell fire فَأَتَرَى فُو بِذُنُوبِ So they will confess their sin, their shortcoming. فَسَوَ قَلْدِ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيدِ So let the people of the fire be taken or driven away. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ On the contrary, those who kept fearing their Lord in the unseen, لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَعَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ For them there will be forgiveness and a great reward. وَأَسِرُوا قَوْلَكُمْ وَوِجْهَرُوا بِهِ whether you conceal your word or proclaim it in the alim bi zat is sudur it's equal to him because he to, he knows whatever is in your hearts but to speak of listening to something which you are saying in low voice or to something which are you, you are saying loudly ala ya'lamu man khalaq will he not know who has created wa huwa latif al khabir and he is the most subtle and the most aware who are the jala lakum al arda zalulan it is he who has made you made for you the earth submissive hum shu fi manake biha so you walk in its tracks wa kulu min rizqihi and you eat from its from its food whatever it gives you wa kulu min rizqihi wa ilayhi nushur and to him to allah will be your resurrection amintum man fi samaa yasaba bikum al ardh fa idha hiya tamur do you feel secure you don't fear your lord who is in the heaven that he will not cause the earth to swallow you up while it shakes in earthquakes amintum amintum man fi samaa yusalla alaykum hasiba or are you absolutely secure that he who is in the heaven will not set against you a stone storm fasata lamuna kayfa nazi then you shall come to know how terrible was my warning walaqad kazzab alladhina min qablihim and surely those also who were before them belied and rejected fa kayfa kana nakir so how was my punishment awalam yarau yatayna fawqum safatin wa yaqbiz don't they see the birds above them they sometimes spread out their wings and other times close them ma yumsikuhun illa rahman nan can uphold them save the compassionate innahu bi kulli shay'in basir surely he is seer of everything amman hadha alladhi huwa jundun lakum yansurukum min duni rahman min al kafirun illa ghurur who is that which can be a host or which can be an army for you to help you besides the compassionate if allah the compassionate wants to do something bad for you who can help you which is the army in al kafiruna illa fi ghurur the disbelievers are in nothing but delusion amman hadha alladhi yarzuqukum min amsaka rizqa or who is that who can provide you with the sustenance if allah withholds his sustenance from you bal lajju fi utubi wa nufur ne they persist in their rebellion 
and aversion. Afa man yamshi makibban ala wajhi yahda man yamshi sawiyan ala sirat mustaqim. This is a very important ayah. Is he who goes crawling on his face better guided or he who walks upright on a straight way? A person is lying on his belly and crawling on the ground. Otherwise he is standing erect and he has a path before him and going. Who will be more guided? Definitely the one who is erect, seeing what is in front of him and he has a way, a path which is following. Now what is the similitude? People who are living only on animal, animal instincts, they have no goal in life, no ideal, then they are living on the bellies. They are crawling, they are not walking. Only a person who has a goal in life, I have to do this, this is my ideal, this is my objective, and this is the path, this is the methodology which I have to follow. He is the person, he is the human being. Otherwise, the others are like animals, crawling on the ground. They have no direction in their lives. They are not living. Life is passing them. They are not passing their lives. Life is passing them actually. Otherwise, a person who has a goal in his life and a methodology before him clear, he is the person who actually can be said to be a human being. Say, he is Allah who has brought you forth and assigned to you hearing and sight and, and the power of reasoning and inference. Little thanks that you give. Say, it is He who has scattered you on, on the earth and him, to Him you shall be returned, gathered. And they say, when shall this promise be fulfilled if you are truthful? Say, the knowledge of that is with Allah alone. As far as I am, I am only a plain warner and nothing else. But when they will see it near, that Qiyamah, then the faces of those who disbelieve will be grieved. And then it will be said, this is what you were calling for, what you were demanding. Say, oh Prophet, have you considered? If Allah destroys me and those who are with me, or He has mercy on us, who will be able to deliver and protect these disbelievers from a painful chastisement? Whatever comes to me, okay, it will come. But what about you? If the chastisement is come to you, who will save you? Pull who are Rahman Aman Nabi. Say, He is the compassionate. We believe in Him. Wale Tawakalna. And in Him we have put our trust. Fasatalamuna man huwa fizalalim mubeen. So very soon He will come to know who is in the manifest error. Pull Arayatum. Say, have you ever considered? In Asbahab Aukum Horan, if all of your water were to sink down into the earth, then who would be able to bring you the clear gushing water? The water table is, if it is going down, you know, then there is worry. The water in the Lake Galilee is going down, and the Israelites are very worried about it. Surah Al-Qalam, Bismillah rahman rahim the first seven or nine ayat of this surah, and I think seven, are the second wahi to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The first is the five first ayat of Surah Al-Alaq, Iqra bismi rabbika al khalaq khalaq al-insana min alaq. And the second wahi is this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Noon wal qalam ar-Rahayas It is starting with one letter, Noon. 
We had already Surah Kaf, Surah Swad. This is the third one. Well, Kalame Vama Yastarun, and by the pen, and by that which they write. Maanta Benema Tanabi Kabi Majinun. You, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are not by the blessing of your Lord a madman or a possessed man by demons or crazy. No, nothing of this sort. Now, actually, this was the first reaction of the people of Makkah. When the first wahi came to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came and, and he said, said, an angel came to me, I was alone in Hera, and this thing happened. So, maybe a general reaction. And it was not in enmity, I think. It was simple reaction. Oh, maybe some jinn has possessed him. Maybe it was some delusion, some illusion, some hallucination. What has happened to him? So that was the first reaction. And people started saying, he has gone mad, perhaps. He has lost his mental balance, perhaps. Perhaps he has been possessed by some evil spirit or jinn. But when the prophets heard these things, he was hurt. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consoling him. No, don't feel hurt. Noon qalame wa ma The pen and all this academic record that this pen has collected, it testifies that you, O Muhammad, cannot be a mad person. Nobody can say this. And for you, there is going to be a reward which will be unending. And surely you are on an extremely sublime character. Can any madman have this type of character which you have, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Actually, these people have gone mad. So very soon, you will also see and they will also see. Who among you was afflicted with madness? Surely your Lord knows best who has gone astray from his way, and he knows best who are rightly guided. These are the seven ayat. We end here. Now this is later period, these ayat which are being revealed at some later time and joined here. So Muhammad Sassim, you don't obey or you don't even listen attentively to these people who are belying you. They wish that you should be ready to make a compromise. So that they will also make a compromise. Don't obey. The mean swearer. This is Walid bin Mughira or Akhdas bin Quraysh. Hamazim Mashaim bin Amin. The favor going about with calumnies. Manail lil khair, hinderer of good. Motadin, transgressor, asim, sinful. Utullin, harsh. Badazalik azanim. And besides all that, of doubtful birth. Ankana Zamalim Babanin. Only because he has wealth and sons? Is Atutla Alehi Ayatuna Kala Satirul Awaleen. Whenever revelations are recited unto him, he says, Fables of the ancients. Sanasimuhu al Khurtum. We shall put a seal on his prominent nose. Inna Balauna Hukama Balauna Ashabal Jannah. Now a story of some people who owned a garden, some brothers. And the garden, you know, the fruit was ready to be plucked. So they made, made a decision at night that we shall tomorrow go and pluck the fruit. And they didn't say, Inshallah. This story of those people who believe in Allah, who are not mushriks, who believe in Allah, but they are so much overwhelmed with this worldly life, that they forget. Forget Allah. And secondly, because they are not keeping Allah's remembrance in their mind, their character goes down. 
moral values go down. So this is a, in a form of a parable, this condition of most of the people who live in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given as an example. We have tried them just as we tried the owners of the garden. When they swore that they would certainly pluck its fruit in the morning. And they made no exception. They didn't say, inshallah. No. We shall definitely. Tomorrow we have to go. We have to do it. Now during the night, a visitation from your Lord visited it, the garden while they were sleeping. Some hot air blew and the whole of the garden was burnt. Fast So the garden became as if it has already been plucked. Fatanada Musbaina, there in the garden this has happened. They are at their house. In the morning they are calling each other. Then they called out one to another in the morning. If you want really to pluck the fruit, then go early to your farm. Then they started, departed. And they were saying to each other in low voice, Let no needy and poor person enter it today. Why should they come? What right they have? We worked over this garden, we looked after it, we watered it. Now the fruit is our. Now these beggars, these poor men, they gather so that they should also be given something. Why should they get? So see to it that today no beggar, no poor man enters there. Now this is the level of their morality. They have gone down so low. Bhagadawala Abdul Qadirin and then they went fully determined in their purpose. Falama Rawa, now when they saw their garden, Kalu in Nala Dalu, they said, Oh, we have forgotten the way, we have come astray. This is not our garden. Ballahlu Mahrumun. But then they realized, Oh, we have been deprived. The middle one, moderate of them said, Did I not keep saying to you, Why do you not glorify Allah? Why have you forgotten Allah? Now they said, They said, Glory to our Lord, surely we were the evildoers. Then they advanced one against the other, blaming each other. You did it. You did it. You made it, made, made us forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You did that. And for that reason, we were, we forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. And the, in the end, Kalu ya wailana inna kunna ta'een. Woe to us, surely. We were all transgressors. Asa rabbuna yubdilana khairam minha. It may be that our Lord gives us in exchange a better garden than this. Inna ila rabbina raghibun. Surely we are beseechers to our Lord. Now the ayah. This is the lesson, the moral lesson of the story. Kazalik al azab. In this way chastisement comes. Well, azab al akhirat akbar. But the chastisement of the hereafter would be much greater. Law kanu ya alamun. Only if they had known. Because here, if one harvest is gone, you can hope to have the second harvest. But then in the hereafter, no harvest. No chance more. So that is the chastisement. If you keep it away from your mind, just forget, just leave it. No akhira. Then Although they believe in Allah, and they are not mushriks, but forgetful of Allah, and low in character. Most of the people belong to this category. Inna lil muttaqina in the rabbihim jannatin na'een. Now, contrary to that, verily for those who fear Allah, for them there are the gardens of bliss with their Lord. Afadajalu al-muslimina kal mujrimeen. Shall we then treat those who submit to us in Islam like the guilty? If there is no akhra, then both become equal. 
people who are guilty and people who are doing good deeds, they are equal. If there is no akhra, no resurrection, no reward, no punishment. Malakum kafat afanajalul muslimina kal majrimin. Malakum kafat ahkumun. What has happened to you? How do you judge? Amlakum kitabun fi tadrasun. Is there a book for you wherein you study? Inna lakum fi lama taqayyarun. That you shall surely have in the akhra what you choose. Amlakum aybanun alena baalgatun alayyob al qiyama. Do they have the oath from us regarding the day of resurrection? Inna lakum lama taqumun. That you shall have whatever you judge. Salhum. Ask him, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ayyuhum izalik al-Zaheem, who can guarantee this? Am lahum shuraka, are there any associates with them? Fal yatu bi shuraka ayhim in kanu sadiqeem. If they are truthful, then they should bring their shuraka, those who they associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yawma yukshafu an saqin, the day when the shin will be laid bare, shin of Allah. Now we can't say, what will be it, its form. But in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari, there is a hadith from Abu Sa'id Khudri, عنه, which says it means this, that in the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show to the people some of his grandeur, which he is referring as the shin. And then they will be asked to prostrate before Allah. يَوْمَ يُشْرَفُ وَانْسَاقِنْ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ these unbelievers, disbelievers, will not be able to prostrate at that time. They will try, they will want, but no. It will be made impossible for them. Because in the life before that, in the world, they didn't use to prostrate before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time, what will happen? Their looks will be downcast. And humiliation will spread over them. وَقَدْ قَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَا إِلَى السُّجُودِ وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ And they were used, they were called to prostrate before their Lord when they were healthy and sound. فَزَرْنِي So leave me, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وَمَنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِحَادَ الْحَدِيثِ And those who belay this Qur'an سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ هَيْسُ اللَّهِ عَلَمُونَ We shall Step by step, lead them on whence they know not. We will give them respite and then pull towards Jahannam. Then some respite, then pull. Just as you know, somebody who is fishing, he, he, he lets the string go, then he pulls towards him, etc. I will give them respite, but surely my plan is firm. أَمْ تَسَلُهُمْ عَجِلًا فَهُمْ مِنْ مَغْرَمِ مُسْقَلُونَ Do you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, ask them for a reward so they are burdened with a debt? أَمْ إِنَّهُمُ الْغَيْبُ فَهُمْ يَكْتُبُونَ Or they have the knowledge of the unseen and they are writing it down? فَسْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ So wait, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, for the command of your Lord. وَلَا تَكُنْ كَسَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ And don't be like the companion of the fish, Hazrat Yunus عليه الصلاة والسلام who without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left his nation. So he was punished. He was swallowed by a fish. And then when he, you know, called Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the belly of that fish, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal zalimeen, then Allah excused him. And then he was vomited by the fish on the bare coast of as far as I think Makran. فَسْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ وَلَا تَكُنْ كَسَاحِدِ الْحُوتِ so wait patiently for your Lord's judgment and be not like the companion of the fish. When he cried out while he was in anguish, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal zalimeen. La ula anta darakahu neymatu min rabbihi la nubidha bil arai wa huwa mazmoon. Had he not a blessing from his Lord which reached him, he was actually already thrown on a plain ground near the coast. And he was masmoom. He was in disgrace. فَجْتَبَاهُ رَبَّهُ But later Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excused him, pardoned him, and he chose him again. 
who brought him nearer to him. Fajalahu min as-salihin. And then he made him from among the righteous people. وَإِنْ يَقَادُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ بِأَفْصَارِهِمْ لَمَّا سَمِعُوا الزِّكْرِ And verily there is those who disbelieve will almost make you slip with their eyes, with their gazes. They used to see Muhammad Sassam with very piercing gazes, piercing eyes. Maybe to kill his will. Or it was also, you know, an occult science. So you can overcome somebody's will through this effect through your eyes. So they are doing so. Lamma Samya Uzzikr. When they are listening to the revelations and the admonition, وَيَقُولُونَ إِنَّهُ لَمَجْنُونَ And they are saying, but verily he is majnoon. He has been either possessed by a demon or jinn or some evil spirit or he has gone mad. فَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرُ لِلَّهِ الْأَمِينَ Whereas the reality is that it is nothing, this Qur'an is nothing, but an admonition and reminding for all the peoples of the world. Surah Al-Haqqah Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Al-Haqqah That thing which is sure to happen. Al-Haqqah Al-Haqqah What is that thing which is sure to happen? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْحَاقَةِ And what will make you realize what is this sure to happen? That is Tayama, resurrection, the day of resurrection, the day of judgment. كَذَّبَتْ سَمُودُ وَعَادُ مِلْ قَارِعَةِ The Samud and Aad both belied the sudden calamity. فَأَمَّا سَمُودُ فَأَوْلِكُ بِالتَّعْلِيَةِ As for the Samud, they were destroyed by the screamer, awful cry. وَأَمَّا عَادٌ فَأَوْلِكُوا بِرِيهٍ سَرْسَرٍ عَاتِيَا And as for the Aad, they were destroyed by a roaring violent wind. سَخَّرَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ الْعَيَالٍ وَسَمَانِيَةَ عَيَّامٍ حُسُومًا Allah imposed death upon them for seven nights and eight days in succession. فَتَرَ الْقَوْمَ فِيهَا سَرْعَا So that you could see the people there in lying prostrate. كَانَّهُمْ عَجَازُ نَخْلٍ خَاوِيَا as if they were trunks of hollow palm trees. فَهَلْ تَرَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَاقِيَا So, do you see any remnant of them? وَجَعَا فِرْعَوْنُ وَمَنْ قَبْلَهُ وَالْمُتَفِقَاتُ بِالْخَاطِيَا In the same way, Fir'aun and those who were before him and the overturned townships of Sodom and Amora, they also committed sins. فَعَصَى رَسُولَ رَبِّهِمْ And they disobeyed the messenger of their Lord. فَأَخَذَهُمْ أَخْذَةَ الرَّابِيَةِ So their Lord seized them with extremely severe seizure of increasing intensity. إِنَّا لَمَّا تَغَلْ مَا وَحَمَلْ نَاكُمْ فِي الْجَارِيَةِ Verily, when the water rose, then we bore you in that floating ark. What do you mean? Your ancestors. Who were with Nuh, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, were our ancestors. So as if we were born. لَنَجْعَلَهَا لَكُمْ تَسْكِرَةً وَتَعَيَّهَا غُدْرٌ وَعَيَّهَا So that it becomes an admonition to you and that the retaining ear might retain it. فَإِذَا نُفِقَ فِي السُورِ Now when the trumpet is blown, نَفْقَةٌ وَاحِدًا With a single blast. فَحُمِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالِ and the earth and the mountains will be lifted. فَدُكَّتَا دَكَّتَ وَاحِدًا And then they will be beaten down and crushed in a single crushing. فَيَوْمَ يَذِمْ وَقَاكِ الْوَاقِعَةِ Then on that day, the event will come to pass. That short thing to happen will happen. إِذَا وَقَاكِ الْوَاقِعَةِ We have read that Surah Al-Waqiyah. فَيَوْمَ يَذِمْ وَقَاكِ الْوَاقِعَةِ So on that day, that happener would happen. When Shakkat is Sama, and the heaven will be split asunder. On that day it will be weak and torn up. And the angels will be standing on its borders. And 
and eight of them, eight angels, will be carrying above them the throne of your Lord. On that day, you will be exposed and you will be brought for the judgment before your Lord. No secret of yours will remain concealed and hidden. Everything will come in the fourth front. As far those who are given their books in their right hands, he will say, Come, come, and read my record. Take this, read my record. I did, surely, I thought that one day I would meet my account. I would meet the results of what I am doing. So he shall be in a life of bliss. In a high and lofty garden. The clusters of its fruit will be at hand. It will be said to them, eat and drink pleasantly. For that which you sent on before in days gone by, your deeds were coming to us and we were writing them and recording them. And as for those who will be given their record, their book, in their left hands, so he will say, Ya laytani lam utiya kitabiya. Would that I had known, I, I had not been given my record. That I had not known what my reckoning and account is. Oh, would that death had made an end of me. Would that the death was the end. My wealth has not availed me. My authority is gone from me. Then it will be said, to the angels, seize him, then fetter him, then cast him into the hellfire, and then in a chain of seventy cubits length, insert him, chain him, bind him. He didn't believe in Allah the Mighty. And nor did he urge the feeding of the poor and the hungry. So, today, here he doesn't have any friend. Nor anything to eat, except foul pus or the wound washings. Nobody eats this, but the evil doers and eat. Nay, I swear by that which you see. And also by that which you don't see. Surely this Quran is the speech of a noble messenger. It's not the speech of a poet. Little it is that you believe. Nor it is the speech of a soothsayer or foreteller. But little are you admonished. This is the revelation from the Lord of the worlds. And if he had invented against us any sayings wrongly, we would have seized him by his right hand. And then we would surely cut his life vain. And then none of you would be able to withhold him from us and save him from our punishment. And this Quran is a reminding, an admonition for the God-fearing. And we know certainly that some of you are there who belie it. They say it is wrong. And so it is going to be an anguish for the disbelievers. And surely it's the truth of certainty. There's no doubt about this book. So glorify your prophet the name of your Lord, the mighty. 
سبحان ربی العصیم بارک اللہ علی و لکم فی القرآن العظیم و نفانی و یاکم بالآیات و ذکر الحکیم اللہ اکبر The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together, we can make a difference.